My name is Jonas, and today our topic is Raven Cast in situ Concrete House, and here is my group members. I'm Xiaoxi. I'm Liu Fei. I'm Weiting. I'm Ryan. So let's take a look. Hi, my name is Jonas, so I need to introduce the project in Malaysia which is used the driven cast in situ concrete piles. Which is I have used in Johor Bahru called the Putri Harbour. Putri Harbour is a mixed development with UEM Sundiam Berhad comprising of condominiums and commercial buildings will be constructed at the Putri Harbour in Johor, Malaysia and it consists of 5 blocks up to 42 storeys and 2 basement car parks. And the Keller Group is a company along with its subsidiaries, Resource Parling and Ansia Asia were contracted to build the foundation of the structure. And the scope of the work is constructed over the 2400 driven cast in situ piles, board piles and micro piles of various diameters were installed as a foundation for the towers and bodium blocks. And the silverworks also performed in this project, which comprise of reinforce. Let me introduce the company of a Keller Group Asian. The Keller Group is the world largest independent ground engineering specialist. And the sector serve includes infrastructure, industrial, commercial, residential, and environmental. In Asia, it combines the geotechnical design and construction experience with our core products in ground improvement and heavy foundation. Since 1970s, we have built a strong presence in Singapore and Malaysia, providing a heavy foundation, ground improvement, specialist grounding, and earth retention system. Ansar is a company in 2014, one of the most experienced driving piling contractors in Malaysia, became a part of the Keller Group. The other project that is used in driven cast in situ concrete piles, which is the famous one, O2 Dom Stadium, and another one is a London Olympic Stadium. Driven cast in situ concrete piles has a long and successful history used in worldwide and it is capable to achieving high working loads in variety of subsoil conditions regardless of water table. This method has been used in top notch building structures such as stadiums, houses act as a foundation. Hi, I'm Yufei. I'm going to talk about the function of driven cast in situ concrete piles. What is driven cast in situ pile? A driven cast in situ pile is cast in position inside the ground, which a hole is created by driving a closed end steel pipe into the ground. Then the soil from the casing is jetted out and filled with cement concrete after placing necessary reinforcement in it. There's two types of cast in situ piles. The first one is casted cast in situ pile. It is metallic shell is left inside the ground along with the core. For the second one is uncasted cast in situ piles. Its metallic shell is withdrawn. The next one is the figure of the cast in situ piles. Uh, this one is the example for the casted driven cast in situ piles. This is the example of uncased driven cuts in situ piles. And this is the plan and section of the driven cuts in situ piles. The next one is the function of driven cuts in situ piles. A driven cuts in situ piles provides support for structures. It also transferring their loads to layer of soil or rock that have sufficient bearing capacity. It have suitable settlement characteristic. It is commonly used to support buildings, tanks, towers, walls, and bridges. 
A driven cast EC2 pulse is displacing the subsoil and the casing is driven with plug or shoes at bottom. It can prove to be economic for sands, gravels, soft slit and clays, particularly when large number of piles are required. For small number of piles, on-site costs can prove expensive. I'm waiting. Now I'm going to talk about the advantages and later Brian will talk about the disadvantages of driven cast in situ concrete piles. First, the pile length can easily be adjusted to suit varying level of bearing stratum. Next, an enlarged base can be formed to increase the relative density of a granular founding stratum which leads to much higher end bearing capacity and the formation of enlarged base does not destroy or reduce shaft skin friction. Besides, the material in pile is not governed by handling or driving stresses as damages due to driving and handling is more common in precast piles rather than cast in situ piles. The bearing capacity of the pile in granular soil will be improved by the compaction of the surrounding soil. Next, noise and vibration can be reduced in some types by driving with internal drop hammer. The work is neat and clean as well as the storage space required is very much less. Lastly, driven cast in situ concrete piles may conveniently be used in places where it is advisable not to drill holes for fear of meeting ground water under pressure. So I'm Brian Heng Yi Cheng and I'm going to talk about the disadvantages of driven cast in situ piles. So the first disadvantage is the pile cannot be driven where headroom is limited and it requires careful supervision and quality control of all material because the concrete cannot be inspected after completion. And the metal is too heavy so it needs sufficient storage space for the material. And the construction of pile where there is heavy current of groundwater flow or artesian pressure is very difficult. Lastly, it's relative expensive compared to other methods. Hi, I'm Jonas again. So now I want to talk about the construction process of the driven cast EC2 concrete piles. The first step of the driven cast EC2 concrete piles construction process, which is the spotting, driving the tube using an external driving hammer. Secondly, the driving, where the driving continues until the required depth is reached. Third is the reinforcement, where the reinforcement cage is placed. Fourth, the concrete placement, the tube filled with concrete. And fifth, the tube extraction. The concrete is compacted as the tube is withdrawn by vibrating the top of the tube with the external driving hammer or the vibrator. 6. The trim. Completed the pile ready for trimming. Hi, I'm Xiao Shi. We've just learned the proper steps to construct the driven cast in situ piles. We also learned about the advantages and disadvantages of such piles. When there are advantages and disadvantages, they are sure to have problems during the construction. Let's have a look at some of them. Necking. For uncased cast in situ piles, when removing temporary casing, concrete could be lifted. Voids in the shaft or what we call as necking in the upper portion of the pile could occur. Segregation of concrete due to dumping. As we know, concrete has to be dumped from great height and this comes with the interference of reinforcement cage within the casing. Hence, a likelihood of segregation of concrete could occur due to the height difference and the force. Landing of reinforcement. Reinforcement cages are usually long due to its long length of driven piles. Hence, lifting and transporting of reinforcement cage may bend at any point. This makes it really difficult for the workers to place and to achieve the required position. Another possible problem during construction is the damaging of adjacent newly cast piles. 
It is caused by the ground movement induced by installation of nearby displacement pulse. It is also suggested that pulse, including casing, should not be driven within the center to center distance of 3 meter or 5 times the diameter of the pulse or casing, which has been casted for less than 48 hours or 2 days. If you require any inquiries, please do not hesitate to contact Janus. Thank you!